it's Sherry here from Plants for All Seasons. Uh, well, we're back after the crazy sod webworm season that we've had. We thought we would kind of revisit you guys. The last video we made was on September 9th when we were seeing a ton of sod webworms. And although we're still seeing sod webworms, we just started seeing brown patch. Um, mine just popped up overnight. Uh, it's really hard to tell in the lighting that we have here, but this morning I walked out and it looked like a circle right in this area and you can see the tips of the blades start turning a yellowy orange color and it has a circular form where our sod webworms looked like um, big circular areas where the grass is just chewed down so now we're on to our next battle in the st augustine which is brown patch so um, to treat it you have several different options my favorite are more organic um, in nature but I'm just gonna touch on the synthetics too um, you could come into the nursery and purchase products like uh, nitrophos uh, PCNB which uh, brown patch control it's Terraclor um, or you could do more of a golf course grade product called headway these would be spot treatments in the yard with systemic effects the um, PCMB you'll have to treat about every two weeks the headway um, once or twice about 28 days apart is what's recommended this is systemic so it'll last in the soil um, my approach is more organic that's what I use in my yard so these spots that I have I will treat uh, with a little bit of compost um, and the micro grow product I have a very nice microbial base built up in my yard because I am an organic gardener um, and I do my lawn care organically as well so what I like to tell people to do is kind of try to switch your treatments more to an or organic regimen and then you can kind of get control over the problem by building the soil so when we get brown patch it's because we have more of an anaerobic situation going on meaning there's not as much oxygen in the soil so a we're either over watering or we have compacted soil, or we just have nothing healthy going on in our yard. So our soil is kind of like our gut, and we really want to build our soil like we build our gut for health and immunity. So um, in my yard, I would take my spots like this and top dress with a high quality compost, uh, Nature's Way Leaf Mold Compost, or the Happy Frog Soil Conditioner. Both amazing products. Um, I would put that down in the area you don't have to put it heavy and what that does is that's putting good microbes into the soil next I would come through with the micro grow which is like amazing uh, inoculant for the soil you would just sprinkle this out this is full of beneficial microbes this is inoculating your soil with all the good guys that are gonna eat the the bad guys basically so You'll put this down just like you would a chemical product. The difference is you put this down, it's actually battling the issue, which is the fungus. It's gonna change your soil structure and it's gonna build those microbes. So you build up the good guys to eat the bad guys. So it's a more sustainable method um, than just keep putting the chemical products out. So you literally can chicken feed this out with your hands. It's all safe and natural don't have to worry about it harming you or your family or you could put it in something like this little um, hand spreader I like this one because it's battery operated and then you can just walk around like that um, but this product right here you can do spot treatments or you can treat your whole yard a bag of this micro grow grows 2,500 square feet um, or you could just simply treat your, your little spots that you have occurring in the yard at the time um, Another thing you could do is if you haven't fertilized, you haven't done any fall fertilization, you could do Microlife Brown Patch, which is basically uh, this product with a fertilizer. And this will go over 2,000 square feet of your yard. So if you haven't fall fertilized yet, you could do this method and it's like two in one. It's your fall fertilizer with your micro grow granular in it. So you've kind of killed two birds with one stone. You've, you've uh, inoculated your microbes to fight the fungus and put your winterizer out at the same time so this is my favorite method along with the the compost here um, to to really get a handle on it you can inoculate the soil with all kinds of micro products I mean we have a ton and we would love to talk to you guys 
um, in person about different options. Uh, but like I said, my favorite method, uh, this is also a good way to go about it, but you will have to do repeat applications. Um, we're still seeing a ton of chinch bug damage. We went from sod webworm back to chinch bug. I'm driving through my neighborhood here, it's chinch bug. Almost every yard um, has been affected by chinch bugs. So if you're still seeing die off in your yard, dry spots, and you know you're watering, um, you will want to put out an insecticide. This right here is a 0.2% bifenthrin that you could put out for chinch bugs at this point in the year. One treatment should take care of it. Um, it's on a sand carrier, so it releases really quickly um, and takes care of your chinch bug. Uh, but that's, that's what we're seeing right now is we're just crossing over from sod webworms. We're still seeing a little bit of it. If you're seeing sod webworm moths in your yard, but you're not seeing damage, you can stop spraying. If you see damage and the moths, then you will want to spray. Let me get it. It's over here. I would spray at this point with this product. This right here is uh, by Summit. It's a biological caterp caterpillar and webworm killer. It's Bacillus thuringiensis. It targets the worm that's actually doing the damage. So you can stop spraying all your insecticides, spray this on your grass. Yes, you will still see moths flying, but now you've protected your grass with this from the caterpillar, which is the only life stage that actually does damage. So, yes, you'll see moths, it's okay. It's, it's almost over. Um, I think once we cool down, the moths should, should calm down a little bit. Um, but you can spray this to protect your grass if you feel like you're still seeing damage. But make sure that you are treating the right thing. Bring pictures to us at the nursery. Um, you can email us pictures through our website. We'll help you diagnose and get you on the right track to the right product. Diagnosis is the hardest thing with St. Augustine. So that's really where we come into play. Um, if you feel like your yard is so damaged from uh, chinch bugs and sod webworm, um, I'm starting to sell ryegrass. And ryegrass, you need to be really careful when you're doing ryegrass. Ryegrass, most of what you see for sale for the consumer, for the homeowner in small containers or small packages is an annual gulf type ryegrass. That is great if you're feeding livestock, horses and cows and goats, and you want something for them to graze on. That's a great ryegrass. In your home environment, you want a turf type ryegrass. So a turf type annual like this SOS 400, um, and then there's an SOS 211 that we sell and a frog hair. Those are intermediate. So that's a blend of a turf type annual and a turf type perennial ryegrass. Those are gonna be lower grower, growing, darker green blades, um, just a nice kind of golf course lawn. So if you feel like you're just so damaged in your grass from everything that's been going on, you can overseed with a turf type ryegrass. Do not do the annual type ryegrass in your yard. If you miss a mowing, it gets this long and then you go mow and it lays down. It looks more like what you would expect to see in a pasture. So stick, if you're gonna do overseeding with ryegrass, do a turf type ryegrass. We sell it at the nursery. If we are out, um, I will special order it for you and have it in by Wednesday. We're about to get rained on here and you know what that means. Perfect brown patch growing time. Uh, so we better get back to the nursery here soon um, so we can assist you with all your issues. Um, another thing, if we're going to be live next week. I'm going to talk about your fall planting, uh, what, what it's time to plant, um, and incorporating bulbs into your your fall planting to uh, have blooms in the spring. Thanks guys, come back and see me.